Welcome to our Cat Pat Phase 1 video series and we're going to be looking at our next step. You should have made your folder structure but now we're going to start our Phase 1 document for the report. So let's get started with it. So in our previous video we created our folder structure and now we're going to create our report and just get it set up and ready for what we need to put in it. So for the Phase 1 all we are really doing is creating the report we are setting up the headings and the cover page and so on and then we will be doing some research that we add to it. If you remember this from the previous video we're going to go into our phase one, we're going to go into our report and we're going to add a new Word document. You could also open up Microsoft Word and then just save it to this folder but make sure that you've got a Word document in your report folder and make sure you give it a meaningful file name. So I'm going to call mine the phase one report. Let's open it. So let's see what they want me to put in the document. So we're going to add a cover page. So what I'm going to do straight away is I'm going to go and press Control Enter. Just so that I've got two pages. And then over here I can insert my cover page. So we're going to go Insert Cover Page. And you can go select the one of the ones that you enjoy. I'm going to select that one. And then on that cover page we need to give it your name and surname. Now there's no real place to put my name and surname. So we can do it in many ways. We can insert for example a text box. I'm just going to draw one. Put it at the bottom here. And because I don't want it to interfere with the actual design of my cover page, I'm going to give it a no fill and no outline. And then type in your name there. Maybe change the text to so you can see it. Make it nice and big so it's visible. We also want to put the name of the school. In the same place, put the name of the school if you want. Or you can create another text box. That's a long education. You can put whatever school you want to put in. Maybe we make that a bit smaller. And italics. And then you're going to put your subject name and the pat topic. So maybe you can put your pat topic over there. You can just type in. And then in the subtitle, maybe that's where you're going to put in the subject name. So you can say cat grade 12. And then your abstract, this is where you will put in maybe your focus question, which we'll get to later. You can always put your focus question here or write a little blurb or extract about what your pat is about. So you can put that in later. But once we've discussed the task definition and the focus question, then you can come back here and add that. But make sure that you do because you want to make sure you've got all four of those things in order to get all the marks. Save our cover page. Let's move on. Now we're going to create an automatic table of contents and table of figures. We'll do that once we've done the headings. So let's get the headings done. So these are the headings that we want in our document. So you can just go type them out. So there I've added the headings. Take note that we're not going to fill everything in in the phase one. We're just going to be laying out the document. We will be doing some stuff in the appendices and the focus question task definition. But the rest of it we're probably going to be doing in the phase three part of the patch. Because these are headings we need to edit them as headings which means I'm going to select the one and I would be very wary of just going changing it over here. We want to make use of styles. So for example over here, let's make a heading one. So we're going to make all of these heading ones and we're going to put each heading at the top of a new page. So I'm going to press control enter for each one just so that we can put each one on its own page. Do not just press enter enter enter, you press control enter or you can go insert a page break. That will also work but you're doing that for each and every one. So I've done that already. Now if you do not like the look of your headings then you can come over here and you can right click on heading and modify it to be exactly how you want it to be. Maybe you want it to be bold, maybe you want to change the font. Do so you can apply it to all of your headings by changing the heading style. You can also come here to design and not only can you change the color scheme of your document which will affect your cover page as well as the color of your headings but you can also come here and select the style of text that you want for example for heading one and so on. So there are other options there are available. So for example if I click on that one you can see the styles different compared to the style of that one compared to that one. So you can pick the style that you like over here. Again, picking the style, then you can come here and further modify it if you want. So you don't have to go with exactly the style that they've got. Pick one and then modify it. Take note, in your PAT document, they will give you a style guide. So this is to help you pick the right settings for your different styles. For example, they tell you about the cover page, using the appropriate font size for your cover page. Don't use word art, for example, on your cover page, that type of thing. And if you a picture you use, make it appropriate. There they talk about the headings, keep them within that size. They ask for those type of fonts, make it readable. And so this is just a guide body of the text make sure that it's distinguishable from the headings left aligned so use this to guide you for your paragraph page layout and your general formatting so now i'm also going to go all the way to the bottom to my appendices and i'm going to create three appendices appendix a appendix b and appendix c and these are going to be subheadings so i'm going to select them 
and make them a heading 2. Now again, if you don't like the look of the heading 2, then you're going to want to go right click here and modify it. And then I'm going to put them on each new page. Appendix A we can keep here, but Appendix B I'm going to insert a page break, and Appendix C I'm going to put a page break. Actually, um, what I'm going to do over here, if you take note, at Appendices, if I come over here to this, you'll notice that we used a page break after the bibliography. I'm going to delete that. I don't want a page break over here. I'm going to delete that page break and I'm going to actually insert a section break, which is mean I'm going to come here to layout breaks and I'm going to put a section break because my appendices are like a separate part of the document. I want them to have a separate page numbering sequence. I want them to be different than the bibliography. So there's my page break. I'm going to press enter. That'll be where my normal text goes. And because I'm doing it this way by using styles, I can come all the way to my table of contents. And here I can come to references, table of contents, and I can actually add in a table of contents. And then there you can see all of your page numbers are set up. We will come later to set up the page numbering of our appendices. Maybe we want to delete that for now because we've got that heading over there. And so there we go. We've got our table of contents. And then we want an appendix for the declaration of authenticity. Now at the bottom of the path guide, I've got one that you can download. You can literally just click on the URL. Here is one. I'm just going to copy this quickly. And then in my appendix C, I'm going to paste I've got our learner declaration. And you can edit it slightly so that it all fits nicely into your document. Remove it, any of the soft enters and you can fill in all your details over here and put a digital signature there if you want to draw a picture of your signature. And we forgot about this one. Don't forget that we need a diagram or screenshot of our folder structure. That's going to go in Appendix A. So yeah, under Appendix A, I'm actually going to give it a heading Appendix A folder structure. And over here, we need to put an image or a diagram that represents our folder structure. Now, here's a great way to use SmartArt. If you've forgotten about SmartArt, then you know, check out this video from grade 10. Remember, we are showing off all our skills. You could do a, a screenshot, but that you might have to take a couple for each folder. So I would come here to insert a SmartArt. It's going to be based on hierarchy and something maybe along the lines of that one would be a great one where you can put in, for example, the name of your patch folder. And then you'll put in your phase one and your phase two. And then we're going to go and add another shape after to get our phase three. And then you can go and do the folders that you created in our previous video for each of the phases. And that way you've got a nice little structure. You can go change its color scheme or what it looks like for your particular example. Maybe you want to make it a bit more colorful. But that way you've got a diagram that represents your folder structure. And you still showed off your smart art skills. I'm also going to come, by the way, back over here to Appendix C and just give this a nice heading of the learner declaration. So that when I come here to my table of contents, I can simply go right click and update field, entire table, and there you can see it's updated those particular headings. I think we've set up our document. If we have a look at our rubric, we're going to go to the phase three part of the rubric. So we won't be assessed on this during phase one but when we get to phase three what you've done so far regarding the cover page is now going to get you marks so for example the cover page added correctly using the appropriate controls adding your surname name a school and topic by just adding those you've got that mark and we will get to the abstract later on so already you can get three of the four marks here and when it comes to the styles we've already got our styles that clearly stand out we've used them for their headings we have different levels of them which are distinguished and they're used to ensure a consistent format. So already there we've got four out of four when we get to our phase three. Over here in our phase one, we've got a single document. We will have our headings. We'll have our appendice and our screenshot correct. So we've got at least three of the four from this particular part of the phase one rubric. And so we're on track to getting all the marks for our cat pat. Remember, the pack guide is going to help you further. Make sure you download it. There are videos that take you through each and every step. So move on to the next step, grade 12s. You're doing well. Keep it up. Whether it's to support the channel or whether it's just to keep up to date whenever we post videos that can help you, make sure you click on that subscribe button at Miss Long RT and Cat. Make sure you share us with your friends as well as on TikTok at Miss Long Education. And please don't do it the long way, but do it the Mr. Long way.